Hello everyone, my name is Tong Gun Lee, University of Florida Tomato Geneticist. Today I have a short video presentation for the virtual field day here at the Research and Education Center. I hope you enjoy my presentation and to know more about University of Florida Applied Tomato Genetics program here at the center. My research focuses on uh, applied tomato genetics. Given we do applied genetics, First, we study tomato genetics, and then we want to use our research outputs to solve challenging problems in tomato production. We have three key approaches. Uh, the first one is uh, the classical genetics, the second CRISPR, and the last one is computing. So in our lab, we are using those three approaches interactively to achieve our research goals. For the classical genetics, each season we make new crossings and we grow new crossings in the greenhouse and we also evaluate them in the field. So all those are for germplasm development and trait evaluation, which are essential in classical genetics. So each season we have yield trials, given we are doing applied tomato genetics, we are broadly interested in tomato fruit yield fruit maturity, trace segregations, and ground tomatoes for potential mechanical harvest. So since 2016, we have accumulated research outputs, and we believe such outputs will give us clear idea about how to improve tomatoes, especially for Florida production. Our second approach is CRISPR tool. So the CRISPR is a biological system that cuts DNA where we want. But unlike previous tools that do similar jobs, CRISPR is much faster and cheaper and very easy to use it. Uh, for tomatoes, for example, we could develop uh, CRISPR-driven tomatoes in less than one year. And changing DNA means we potentially create new phenotypes or traits such as new disease resistance that we want to have. So this CRISPR tool became one of essential research approaches in our program since 2018. So our lab is using CRISPR to develop new tomato germplasm. And here we can see in this Gulf Coast Research and Education Center map, we have places where we use for CRISPR design and development and a greenhouse space for CRISPR tomato first evaluation. We have several successful CRISPR tomato lines in our lab. One of them is a tomato line that is much shorter than normal large fruited fresh market tomato plants. With the collaborative University of Florida tomato research work, we successfully developed the first CRISPR driven compact gross heavy tomato plants by using CRISPR tool that cuts a single gene of breeding interest. You can see here on your right side, uh, CRISPR-driven plants look much shorter than their background tomato lines, but we can observe decent size of tomato fruits on those CRISPR-induced plants. Our last approach is computing. We use bioinformatics tools to increase the quantity and quality of data on tomato genes. Specifically, we heavily use University of Florida supercomputing system called Hypergator. So what you are looking at here on this slide is black colored metal cabinets. They look similar to piles of pizza boxes. But these are actually newly prepared Hypergator AI unit in Gainesville. With this computing system, we have been able to complete diverse tasks we could not perform previously. Here is an example that shows how our lab is utilizing the supercomputing system. Let's say I want to find my tomato specific DNA sequence fragment so I can use CRISPR to edit that DNA sequence in the laboratory. Well, first let's fragment your tomato's DNA sequence. First, we have to get into the computing system. To do that, we type in our ID, 
an address with the password. So now we are actually in the computing system. Once we are in the system, we move to a working place and we start to prepare a job for the computer. I'm creating a new folder for this job and I'm moving the real tomato genome sequence files into the folder that I just created. And those two files that what we are looking at right now, those are the files of our whole genome sequence data set. Then I opened a new working document to create a series of command lines so the computer understand what kind of jobs I want. And I'm, I'm setting up specific conditions, the job name, uh, memory uses, how many jobs together, and output file name, and the memory uses, etc. Then I call a specific program to fragment my tomato genome sequence. Here I use Jellyfish. And I'm copying more working conditions to here. Then I save this file as mytom.sh. And I got, finally, I created a job file. And I submitted the file to the computing system. After a few minutes, I checked the folder and I got result. So we have more files that are created here in this folder. And then I'm opening uh, the original whole genome sequence data. They look complicated. Now I'm looking at opening the final output uh, data set. So this short ATGC DNA information actually indicates fragmented DNA, uh, tomato DNA sequence. And I just logged out. So as such, students and scientists under my supervision, they have been encouraged to have the benefit of computing technologies to generate genetic information and or gene information through bioinformatics. Of course, I also teach bioinformatics to students and scientists who show interest in this study area. So I hope you enjoyed my presentation and now you know more about University of Florida Applied Tomato Genetics program. If you have any question, please contact me. Thank you.